Last video, I asked you guys to comment any prequel props for me to make, and you guys commented Commander Cody. So, I'll be making that in this video. Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name's Ryan, or RJR Productions, and today I'll be showing you how I made my Episode 3 Screen Accurate Commander Cody Phase 2 Helmet. Let's get started. For this video, I decided to remake my visor piece, since the one that I made last year wasn't accurate to the Episode 3 version, it was more tiered toward the Clone Wars version, and believe it or not, they're actually different. So I just modified it to make it look more accurate to the episode 3 one because this is an episode 3 helmet. And I didn't make it as curved at the top because that angles the faceplate way too far forward. So I decided to put a very minimal curve and then I just curled that together, glued a little support piece between the visor and then set that off to the side as I make a bar. Now this bar is the same as my past helmets because it's around 26 inches and I just added a little piece to close it all together at the seam. And I added another piece of cardboard behind the visor, so that just added a little bit of support and it gave it a little bit of width off of the helmet. Now, I did put a support piece in the middle of the visor again on this helmet, just because I thought that would improve the structural integrity of it while I'm building it. And I've used that for my past several helmets. It works very well. And then after I had that done, I filled in one piece for the mouth it was just a curved piece of cardboard with the angles slanted that I just cut and put there. And then I made the little details that go below it and I made it the appropriate length. Now Commander Cody has a very obvious front detail that's black. It's kind of this one stem in the middle and it has a little branches on the outsides. So I just made sure to put that in. I cut a couple of the teeth out and then I made sure to do the same method with my Captain Rex helmet for the side tubes. So if you weren't there for that one, it's basically just a flat piece of cardboard that I've cut little notches out of. And then when I roll it together and glue those notches together, it makes this very cool shape that's a little bit thicker at the back and then it comes and caves in towards the middle. I really like this design and I think it's pretty cool. So then I put a piece in the middle of it, kind of that house shape. And this one isn't as pronounced as the animated one. It's a little bit more hidden and just tucked away in there. Basically what I'm trying to convey is it's just a lot smaller than the animated style. After I had this done, I started working on those cheek panels. And this one's different from the animated one as well. I really like this design. It has these slanted pieces, kind of like with my commando helmet, kind of curves in. It's a concave shape, but it also angles slightly inwards. And then it has a piece glued to the back of that. I also made sure to carve out pieces of those front nozzles, just so when you put it on, it'll kind of not cut away at your face. I'll show you right now with the actual helmet. So this is what I was trying to describe in the last shot. As you can see, it's kind of curved, so when you put your head in, it'll fit a lot better, and it won't kind of cut it out. The next thing I did is I worked on those side compartments, so I did the back piece of this. And this is about between half an inch and three quarters of an inch thick. It just goes and fills in from the inside of the cheek piece to the outside where that little detail strip will go. And that's what I ended up gluing on next. I just cut out four pieces of cardboard, I just layered them together with a little rounded bit at the top and I just glued them onto the sides. And once I had that done, I was realizing that this was going to be a very accurate build and I was really happy with the outcome that I was having so far. So I decided to finish there for the day. And then the next day I picked up with doing those little side cheek pieces. So the first attempt I did at this, it was a little bit smaller. So what I ended up doing was just the first time around, I glued on a piece from the bottom of the cheek panel all the way around to the inside. And then I found out that it was a little too small. So I just glued on a piece bigger than that over it just to cover it up. Once I was happy with that, I did the same thing on the other side. And then when I had both of those side pieces done, I just cut out another small curve of cardboard and glued it from the bottom of that ear piece that covers your ear and it just cuts around and glues kind of halfway around that front cheek piece. Now this isn't a full tube because you can't really fit your ears in the helmet once it is. I also added a support bar from jaw to jaw kind of just on either side of those ear pieces and this just makes sure that it doesn't stretch or shrink kind of how my pilot helmet did. 
so it was very easy to fix. Um, then I continued that front detail all the way around to the back. So if you look at the visor plate, basically from a side profile, you can see that continues from the front to the back. And you can just really taper that in and get a good look at it once you look at your reference image. So I just add that little piece of cardboard, and then I took one big piece of cardboard, curled it around the back, and then I added all those tiny back details, such as the two very long triangles, and then I ended up forgetting to do that circle, so I just did it later on. Don't forget about that. And then the back of this helmet doesn't really curve out like the Rex one because this is the episode three version, right? So it just goes straight down at the back. So what I had to do was kind of taper these pieces from being a cylinder shape to kind of curving around and then being completely flat at the back. And then once I was happy with that, I just started working on that visor piece. So this was very fun to do. Uh, it was actually really cool. And I started with that top piece. So the piece that's the very top of it. And this is just a piece of cardboard that I use and I cut the contour out from the top shape. And once I had the top piece done, I traced it out, extended it a little bit more, and then I started fleshing out the side bits. So the side bits are more pieces of cardboard and they're kind of in a shape where it's long at the back and then it kind of gets shorter and then extends down a lot at the bottom to where it connects with the cheek panel. And this is actually connected in the animated version, it's not. And this just goes temple to temple. It's very simple. And this is just like a box shape. So I basically had that shape done. And then in the middle of it, there's a little dip. It's kind of a semicircle. So I just cut about half an inch out of the center. And then I curled a three quarter inch piece that was the same length as the whole piece. And then I glued it on. And then I just extended out the back just a little bit more and made the transition just a little bit smoother. I also marked where the piece would connect at the base just to make my life easier. And this is what the piece was looking like after it was finished. As you can see, it fits on the helmet very nicely. And one thing that I did that I didn't show here is I just covered up the corrugation at the front. So now I have the visor piece all finished, so that's very good. And now I can focus on the dreaded dome. Now for me, this is the most boring part of a project just because it's the same for each one. There's really no unique part about it except for the ARF Trooper helmet. So I just made it past it. It's basically the same unique technique as I've done with the past four helmets, the Rex, the Mandalorian, this one, and my pilot helmet. So I just have a bar across the top and then bar across the sides. And each of those is about two and a half inches wide. Same technique as my other videos. I'll kind of skimp over it in this one. It's just a piece of cardboard that goes from corner to corner with a couple of cuts in it that just makes it fold and just bend a lot easier so it can curve over the gap and not look as rigid from the outside. That's why I developed this technique. Then once I had the main bar on, I just filled in the small two gaps on either sides with just flat pieces of cardboard. These ones don't need the same technique. And then I did the fin in the middle. So I took a strip of cardboard that was about an inch wide and I glued it on in the middle wrapped it all the way around to the back. And this is very crucial that you look at a reference image here because you don't want to put it too low or too high. It just looks very awkward if you do so. And then I put the two little details on top of that with another layer of cardboard added. And now I worked on those two other missing sides. And this helmet's very weird how the dome is actually mainly covered in the middle section with these, I don't know, they're kind of like tan fins, I guess. So I just cur cut out this estimate curve shape. And then once I was happy with that, I just added, I traced it out for the other side. And then I added some small strips of cardboard on top of it to get that little raised detail. And then once I was happy with those, I just put in the rest of the dome. So at this point you could call it done with the construction and just not do this little detail to make it Commander Cody specific. And then you'll have yourself a pretty decent phase two helmet. But what I did is I made these two side strips, which will all go on here. And I also made this visor piece, which just goes on here. So what I need to do now is spackle over all the gaps on the dome and around this lip at the bottom and just in these cupboards or whatever. And back here. But then once I have that done, I can prime it and paint it and then do all the tiny details. I go over the spackling process in a bunch of my other videos, so I will answer a couple questions right now. So 
So I've been getting this one question, basically, what is spackle? So spackle is basically the stuff that you put on seams in a wall where a joint would be. And I prefer the flexible kind just because it can flex without cracking. And it's, it's better than plaster because plaster will obviously crack. And this stuff doesn't crack at all, so that's why I like it. So I just go over all those gaps and then I make sure to sand it. This is some 220 grit sandpaper. I put it on this little makeshift sanding block just because I don't have one. Again, I just made it. And I just went over all those gaps, made sure to file down the high spots. And this project actually didn't need multiple layers. I was able to do it with just one layer. One tip I've learned over these vast couple helmets is make sure not to sand the actual cardboard because that makes it very rough. And then once you paint it, you can really see those spots where you sanded. So just make sure to keep that to a minimum. So there's just one little detail that's kind of on the peak of the helmet. I'll show you on a representation of my Rex helmet. It's kind of like right here. It's this little light thing, I think. So I have this little piece of plastic that I just chopped down. I'll put some cardboard around it, and then this is painted orange and white. So I'll get that done. And then it looks like it has a little thumbtack detail sticking out of it. So let's take a thumbtack, cut off the sharp end, and glue it off. So this is what I came up with for that little detail that goes on the side of the helmet. This screw actually isn't glued, glued in yet, because if I glued it in, then I wouldn't have any way to attach it to the helmet. So my idea is to have this poking through from the inside of the helmet, and then this will attach from the outside, and I can just glue it on through that hole right there. So I went ahead and made some plates, two plates that go on the top and the bottom of this piece, and those, I went ahead and painted the same orange as the visor and everything else. Then this piece will be painted white, and this screw will also be painted white. And here I have the final detail for this helmet. So this goes on the side here, just of the helmet. It has this little piece of corrugated cardboard here. It has this little circle, and then just a skewer that has a little tiny rangefinder on top of it. So this goes on the side of the helmet, and this will be a light gray color, so... I'll go paint this and then I can paint the rest of the helmet white. So what I just did is I painted this main front area black and the two sides orange and then these main side areas blue just so I can get those blue hash marks. And then these little things, they have seven orange triangles at the front. Then this is all black. And I also painted this little divot back here, dark gray. So basically what I'm going to do is mask off this black area, mask off the stripes over here, and mask off the seven triangles on each side, and this fin at the back, and then I'll be ready to paint this white. This detail that I made will be painted the same color as the, the filler primer. I now have the back masked off, the blue parts, the orange, the black, and same with the other side, all done. So now I'm ready paint the whole thing gloss white. And here's a picture of what the helmet was looking like after I peeled off all the masking tape. I'm really liking how it's looking. Now that I have all these pieces back inside, I'm going to take these two pieces and glue them on the top. And the last piece to go on is the visor because that will be obstructing all the weathering and stuff like that. I will also glue on both of these side panels and I will do all the detailing on the visor piece. So, I'll get right to it. Now I've attached the two tan fins on the top and this black bar around the front. If you notice, there's a gap between here and here. That's because when the visor goes on, it'll cover this, so there's no need to do that. And then I also put a black piece back here. And on the visor, I did all the white details. So, the next step is to put in the visor and then to assemble all the other pieces. I also colored the tip of this black with a sharpie and this piece needs to have these two orange plates go on either side of it. So I'll be back when that is done. Now I have the whole visor in and I also have a little bit of mesh in these gaps. So the next step for the whole helmet is to weather it and then I can attach the visor and after that I can attach this purple strip that I painted. This purple strip kind of goes all the way along here. I'll pop up a picture right now so you can see what that looks like. So I'm not going to show you the weathering process just because I've done it so many times. 
So just go check out my first weathering video, which was the how to weather on DIY tips and tricks. So I'll go weather the helmet. And now you might be seeing a big change. And that's because after I weathered it, I just glued on the visor and I glued on both of the side details along with this little black piece. And I also just glued in a bunch of details down here. These are very similar to the Captain Rex ones. It's just the one in the middle has this little raised thing in the middle. Now that I have all those details glued on, including this purple reddish ribbon, I'm now done with my helmet. So even though I said it was just finished, I kind of forgot about this little piece that goes right here. So I'll go ahead and quickly attach that. With that last detail attached, that is how I made my Phase 2 Commander Cody helmet. If you have any suggestions on what I should make in my future videos, please leave them in the comments down below. A little sneak peek on what I'll be making next, it is from the new Rise of Skywalker movie, so keep your eyes peeled for that video. This has been RGR Productions, signing off, till next time.